the Dodgers get their guy and don't give up a single top 100 prospect in the process. Hey guys, it's Josh the 90 Know It All coming to you today to talk a little bit about the trade that happened late last night. Mookie Betts is now officially a Dodger. But guys, before we break the trade down, don't forget to go down and click like on the, the video. It helps out. And don't forget to subscribe so that way you know when new content comes out. Uh, you can check it out. We do stuff every day. Going to be starting the season pretty soon. Going to have a lot of interviews. Hopefully a lot of game highlights. And if I can really get some good video and have some fun doing it, I'm going to create a documentary or two. Uh, talking about baseball in the Northwest as well as Juco baseball uh, just as a whole. So a lot of things I'm working on, a lot of things going on. But guys, once again, don't forget to subscribe just so you know that uh, when new videos come out. But let's jump into this. Last night, I was sitting on the couch just relaxing, turned on Twitter, and all of a sudden I started seeing this flood of stuff going through, talking about the Dodgers and Red Sox having a trade, a, a third team involved, and then the Angels making a trade with the Dodgers, and things were just going crazy yesterday. And, and it was, you know, it was kind of fun to watch. I like watching stuff like that. So uh, I, I kind of wanted to give my thoughts on the trade, kind of give you my reaction to it. Um, right off the bat, last night, I, when I heard that Betts was going to the Dodgers, I thought they would have to give up more than they did. Um, I understand in some ways why they didn't have to give up, give up as much, but... Uh, let's break it down. So Dodgers, obviously, they get Mookie Betts. Uh, they get David Price. They actually get money from Boston as well. Uh, in the end, after everything's said and done, the Dodgers stay under the $208 million salary cap. Uh, not salary cap, but salary threshold for the luxury tax. So uh, that was big, and that comes into play with what all they did uh, with other players later on. But it's, it's a win for the Dodgers. It really is. Mookie Betts is one of the best players in the game. Uh, you're putting him into a lineup that can protect him. He's going to be the leadoff hitter. And I, I know that Jock Peterson, you know, did well. It did okay as a leadoff hitter. Mookie is going to be so much better. I mean, let's just be honest. He is. He, he is designed for that. He, he's got it all. And when you put guys like Bellinger and Turner and Muncy and Seager all in behind him, man, there's there's going to be a lot more runs, I think, for the Dodgers this year, which is pretty impressive because they had a strong lineup last year and the year before that. So uh, this really does help the Dodgers out. I really think that David Price being picked up in this trade is actually a positive for the Dodgers as well. He can come in. I mean, he can be a fifth starter. He's he's Yes, he's been hurt, and he hasn't been the David Price of old, but he's leaving a division in the AL East that really is more hitter friendly in a lot of ways. Uh, I see Boston as a very hitter friendly park. Yankee stadium is a hitter friendly park. I think even uh, Tampa Bay, their home field is more hitter friendly. So when you get into um, the West, especially the national league West, these fields are more pitcher friendly. San Francisco is, is pitcher friendly, uh, Arizona, San Diego. I mean, these are more pitcher friendly areas um, and he'll get, you know, extra starts in that area, you know, he's a fifth starter at this point. And if he gets his stuff back, he could be a three starter. You know, there's nothing really to lose on this. This is just a, um, it's a good, it's a good risk. It's a good risk for the Dodgers. You know, you get a guy who can throw innings, get some strikeouts, get some outs for you. You know, what does it hurt? So I like this. I know a lot of people are saying that if the Dodgers don't sign bets to a long-term contract, that this trade is, um, a bad trade for them? I don't think so. I think it's a good trade. Um, it gives them a chance to really make a push this year, change things up, maybe give them the spark they need to make another run at a World Series. And so I think I think it's a good move. I think it's a good trade, especially when you look at what they gave up. They, you know, first they give uh, they they had to trade Kenta Maeda to Minnesota. Um, so that way one of Minnesota's prospects could go to Boston. That's not a huge loss for the for the Dodgers, obviously. And then they give up Alex Vertigo, and he's going to be a star. I think he's going to be a great player. So they do lose that, but they don't really touch their farm system. The Dodgers' farm system is still intact. All the guys they wanted to keep and hold on to, all the pitchers, the young pitchers they had, they're still there. 
And I know a lot of people are saying, well, why keep prospects? You don't know if they're going to work out. Um, they're not going to have a chance to play. And that's true. But at the same time, they can make another trade. They didn't lose any of their top 100 prospects. They can still go make another trade midseason if they need to. They still have these guys. They had, you know, last week, they still have the same guys. They're still able to trade them. So that's big. I think that's big. You know, uh, the Red Sox did get a, a prospect from the Twins as well in this. So the, the Red Sox, their end makes sense as well. Uh, at the end of the season, Mookie Betts is probably not going to sign with Boston had he stayed. Uh, he would have been signing somewhere else, and all that Boston would have got is a draft pick. A draft pick that probably doesn't match up with either of the two prospects that they got in this trade. So that makes sense. They, they're able to dump David Price and part of his salary. Obviously, they're sending cash to L.A., so not all of it, but they're sending part of it. So, yeah, I, I get it from Boston's standpoint. Um, I think if I'm the Boston GM, though, I don't know that I make this trade, uh, especially for what I got. I would have probably demanded a little bit more. But at the same time, I'm not the GM there. That's up to them. That's their choice. They okayed it. And I once again, I think in all of this, the Dodgers come out ahead. Uh, then to clear some, some salary, so that way they can stay under the luxury tax, uh, the Dodgers do send Jock Peterson to the Anaheim, uh, and they get... Uh, Rengifo, I think is Luis Rengifo, uh, utility infielder, young guy, 22, still has five years of control. So I understand that trade. You know, you have plenty of outfielders in L.A. Uh, there's not a shortage of guys who can play the outfield. With Mookie Betts being leadoff, you don't really need Jock there. Uh, Jock really can't play a whole lot of other spots. So it made sense. You know, at least for, for Peterson, he's just going down I-5, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minute drive difference. So he's not really leaving. The area is still going to be there. All the Dodger fans will still go cheer him on. I, I suspect they will quite a bit because he was a fan favorite. So I, I think in all, the trade makes sense, um, All both trades. And I think the Dodgers win this one. You know, and once again, time will tell. We'll see what happens. But I, I really think this is a trade that will impact the National League West. I think it will impact the National League. Uh, I think it's something that the other teams, you know, took notice of. And, you know, people are saying, yeah, the Diamondbacks have gotten better. They have. And I've said it before, they've gotten better. But they're not to the Dodgers level yet. They're not there yet. Um, you know, had the Padres gotten this trade and bit, gotten Mookie Betts instead of the Dodgers, I would have put them higher as a contender. Still not up to the Dodgers level. But, you know, in the end, the Dodgers pulled the trigger. They got it done. And, you know, I think there's a good shot they signed Mookie to a long-term deal, or at least a four- or five-year deal, um, if not longer, seven, eight years. And I think they, they pull it off. I think they can do it. Um, I think they're ready to do it, and this is all part of the plan. So, you know, those are just my thoughts on the trades. I, I think, like I said, I think this is something that um, worked out for all the teams involved in one way or another. Um, some got better into the deal than, uh, than other ones did. Uh, I do want to say, if, if I'm a Red Sox fan right now, I'm, I'm mad. If I was a Red Sox fan, I'd be furious. I'd be furious. Yes, Vertigo is, is a good young talent, but Mookie Betts is a MVP caliber talent. And to lose that, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would be so mad. I understand that. I understand why they would be mad. I understand why Yankee fans are probably smirking and, and smiling a little extra today because they just got one, one of their biggest... Uh, competitors just took a step backwards, just took a big step backwards. So that's my thoughts, guys, on the trade. Um, you know, leave your thoughts down in the comments below, what you think, who you think won, what things you're looking for out of this trade for the future to know who won. Um, and do you think this impacts the Dodgers enough to not only get them back to the World Series, but to get them a championship? So, guys, I'm Josh, the 98 Know-It-All, coming to you today just to talk about some fun stuff, and I will talk to you guys later.